<laughs> it's not so much that the industry has just changed and they want individuals like myself on those stages now. It's because we can't be ignored anymore, mm. right? The equivalent of what you would look at as a person's rap career or their brand, right, is the same thing that I have, right? I can go tour, right? I can pack theaters. I have a show that gets millions and millions of views. We've created a brand and a movement. Mm. So it's mutually beneficial, right, that you got, you know, this younger generation who has the ear to the people, right, and the attention as well. So if we collaborate and pay him to come on, guess what? Our band benefits, our brand benefits as well. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to completely do that you're completely in line with what I'm saying and what I'm doing because most corporations or people that are behind the corporations are not always in line with the entertainer, right, because they be talking about nothing. Mm -hmm. No, they understand it's business, Business is warfare, so you have to have a strategy when you go about doing business in this world, figuring out what's your goal, how you go get there, and what are your strategies to get there. Mm. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J Hill Podcast, but right now I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and TopDogLaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones, the big ones. So shout out to my guy Top Dog Law, TopDogLaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. You good, Ozo? We good? We ready? You ready, bro? Yeah, I'm straight. All right, man. Let's get to it, man. Yo, you know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Yo, um, you know we keep going. We keep climbing the uh, the ladder of success, and it just keep getting better and better and better. Everybody be like, Yo, how you get your guests? What you how you like? What you do to get them? I just stay consistent. Um, this next guy right here, uh, super dope. I mean, uh, like, you might have to help me with the titles. Uh, we got international thought leader. Yes, sir. Um, we got entrepreneur. Yes, sir. We got a uh, producer, <laughs> right? You could say that. Yeah, designer. We got uh, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, businessman. I mean, this guy is uh one of the most interesting. Now that I got the intro all the way, because I had to practice that, but I can say it from the heart. You know, being real, one of the most interesting people I've um prepared an interview for. Oh man, I appreciate that. Um, and and I mean that. I don't know if that's good or bad though. Mm. I was doing as I was doing my um my my research and my preparation. I didn't. I, I honestly didn't know which way to go. That's good. And usually when I'm interviewing somebody, like I, I have a, like a whole list full of questions. I know where I'ma go. I know how I'ma maneuver in a in a conversation. But this one, it was just like all of your conversations. And I hate to be this corny, but I mean they are pretty much what you promote. Like that yes, high sir. level conversation. Um, so I did. I wanted to start with our first introduction. Mm. I'm, I, I officially met you at Revolt World. Okay. And we had a, a short conversation about the industry being quote unquote weird. Mm. But the more I see myself getting into it, the more I find that statement being a contradiction. And your mm. answer was pretty thought provoking in itself because you was like, that's because a lot of us are coming into it. A lot of the young ones are yeah. coming into it, and we're changing that narrative. I wanted to talk to you about that. No, I think it's exactly that. I was having that conversation with my bro, um, LaRussell, as well, because he was asking me, he said, I see you moving a lot. And these years, you know, in recent, he said, I see you on this side now, being able to move through these spaces of mm -hmm. the industry. And he was asking me, like, how does that feel? And... I understand why he asked me that question. Like when you take things back, you know, when I when I think about the industry, when I think about any industry, right? You think about the gatekeepers, mm. right? You think about, you know, who they not letting in. Then you personalize it as well when you're on that journey, like, man, they don't want to support me. They don't want to see a person like me rise. And you once you get in the game, some things you realize that is because I don't understand the system. Mm -hmm. And then some things that you realize that, hey, exactly what I thought was true, mm. right? And what I'm learning in the game is both of those. It's the parts where I didn't have a strategy to know how to move. All I had was the frustration, mm. right? And the frustration came from the ignorance, 
right, of having this lack of understanding, right? Because you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can be the most righteous person in the world, but if you don't network, you don't know the right people, mm. right? So it's a skill set that has to be married with what you know, right, and that skill set of who you know. So once I learned that, I'm like, damn, some of these blockades that I've heard throughout the years, right, is because those people probably weren't people persons. They probably didn't know how to network. They didn't know how to talk to people outside, right, they bubble and they sphere of thinking. Mm. So for me, it was like, no, we got to learn how to talk to different people, right? We got to learn how to talk to the corporate types, talk to the to those who, you know, come from a background of degrees, right? Talk to people who may be in politics, talk to people who are in the media, talk to people who are in the industry, because you need friends all around in different places. As they say, you need friends in high places, mm. right? So what we've learned to do is to make those connections, get that information. And then you realize sometimes I ain't got to go that way. I can make my own way, right? And that's the more even beautiful route, because mm. it's like, you see me at Revolt World, but why am I on that stage? Mm. <laughs> it's not so much that the industry has just changed and they want individuals like myself on those stages now. It's because we can't be ignored anymore, mm. right? The equivalence of what you would look at as a person's rap career or their brand, right, is the same thing that I have, right? I can go tour, right? I can pack theaters. I have a show that gets millions and millions of views. We've created a brand and a movement. So it's mutually beneficial, right, that you got, you know, this younger generation who has the ear to the people, right, and the attention as well. So if we collaborate and pay him to come on, guess what? Our band benefits, our brand benefits as well. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to completely do that you're completely in line with what I'm saying and what I'm doing. Because most corporations or people that are behind the corporations are not always in line with the entertainer, right? Because they be talking about nothing. Mm -hmm. No, they understand it's business. Business is warfare, so you have to have a strategy when you go about doing business in this world, figuring out what's your goal, how you go get there, and what are your strategies to get there. Mm. Now, it's crazy that you say that. Like, you touched on so much, and uh, I wanted to touch on the, the networking piece. I feel like a lot of times coming where we've come from, like you born in St. Louis, uh, raised in Oakland, mm -hmm. like you, especially like those, the hood environments, right? Mm -hmm. like I, I come from the projects of Baltimore City, yeah. right? So, like, it. The world looks so different inside our our bubble, that proximity, because mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't branched out yet. So when you start doing things, if it's not the way you're used to it, it can look different. For Absolutely. example, when I started, and I'm be completely honest, I came in here, my guy Seven said, shout out to him, he was like, yo, I don't know if he said congratulations, I'm proud of you, because he know I don't really network because it's weird. And for my people that's listening, quote unquote weird, it's not what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. So when I come and I network and you say you want to do something, I'm expecting you to do it. Not understand that that has so many layers to it. it gotta make sense for you. Mm -hmm. It gotta be the right time. And it, I might say I, I, I'm gonna do it because I get so many people to ask me. And I'm not lying to you. It's just, yo, we're, we're like, can I give you my number? So yeah. once I get your number, I'm thinking, you said you're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Nah, that ain't how the game works. <laughs> and it gets frustrating. It's like, man, I'm not about to mess with these nah, kids. That ain't how the game works at all. And, and, and But then I also learned to not take things so personal. Because mm. when it's business, my uncle told me a long time ago, he was like, when it's business, you can bother a person all day long. Mm. Right? So that means a person said they go do something, you can keep calling and be as consistent as a hound dog. Right? Because somebody give you a word, then you can follow up a million times until, until that they word say, is kept. Exactly. When it's personal, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you're just trying to be the homie and you keep calling me. Now, that's weird. You got you on some weird shit right now. Mm. Like, bro, I don't feel like talking. Right? Now, if I tell you, like, bro, I'll do your show. You feel me? And then you follow up, whether you followed up for 10 years straight till it happened. That's business. No, nah, facts. It, you know, it's an activity till you meet that goal. Mm -hmm. You just managing your business affairs, which is keeping communication tight. Facts. So when we talk about things that are weird, what is weird? Things that are strange, unusual, unfamiliar, things we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Right? So for me, moving, I start to understand things from the outside. At the top looks weird because you don't understand it. Right. You don't understand why they make that move, why they do that. If I was in that position, you can only say that from your position, mm. right? You can't say that from a higher position because you don't know it, mm. right? So everything is going to look strange to you. So when you get closer up, you also realize that these things aren't as powerful as we thought they were, right? It's a lot of facade, exactly. right? And we give, we we play in our imagination more than we do in reality. So, you know, we have a higher expectation and a higher 
you know, an exaltation towards these things than they deserve, mm. right? So we be like, this entity has all this power, and this man they ain't doing all that. You have to remember, people are people. Unless they were born with some gene that made them the most calculating human beings on the planet Earth, and everything they do is directly intentional, and they're all connected with some uniform thought to where everything they do is concentrated for a purpose— Man, all that shit ain't going on that you think it is. Mm -hmm. And you can infiltrate quicker than you think you can. But you got to have a strategy and a plan. And like you said, though, that difference is what breeds the greats, though. Everybody who, not for the most part, a lot of people who came up that was really successful, that made a name and impact on themselves, was different from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Talk about the rap game a lot, or the hip-hop culture a lot. A lot of people, I've seen this a lot. A lot of people come up and they say, they come to the A&R or the manager. You are let's say generation now for a lot of people will come up to uh to to um drama and Don Cannon be like yo I want to be the next Uzi and it's like bro we don't need the next Uzi cuz mm -hmm. we got Uzi right. the same with the, the the same with the world the moment you're able to separate yourself uh, it's going to come with some backlash it's going to come with a lot of people talking cuz you are different but mm -hmm. that's when you know you're truly special and when your light can really shine mm -hmm. like that's when you know you you got something going for you no that's a super fact i, I don't like being compared to nobody else because, you know, my story ain't been written yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, I've closed certain chapters. That's about it. But the next chapter, you can't determine. And people try to determine that through comparisons. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're the new this, so it must go this way. You must do this next. Nah, you can't write my next chapter for me. So I don't allow people to, you know, make their comparisons my new reality. You put this on your um your uh, Instagram, uh, I don't know if it was live a while back. I think somebody had compared you to like uh, Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. You probably get this yeah, comparison yeah, all the time. Yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. you can't compare me to him because what he thought was right or what he did back in his times was during his time. Yeah. This is a new day and age. This is my time. And Malcolm X was great for all intent and purposes. Malcolm X was one of the greatest orators and communicators in the history of existence, right? He's up there with the top of the top. People talk about they top rappers. I think about my top orators mm. in history. He's on that list. I think Malcolm X was a very righteous man and individual, and his attempt to, you know, give us freedom, justice, equality, and human rights, right? What we deserve. And, you know, when you look at Malcolm X's life, you see somebody who didn't step into righteousness till, you know, he was in his, you know, I believe, 30s, mm. I imagine. And I was thinking about this just the other day because we was having this conversation on, and it's like, if Malcolm X was born in this day and age, right, he would have been, and, and, and he was popular, he would have been counseled because he would have been with white women, he would have been doing drugs, he would have been pimping, he would have had been putting chemicals in his hair, he would have been everything that you consider a coon to be, mm. right? But you didn't allow him to get the teachings that will allow him to get that knowledge of self that will transform him right, and transform his thinking to become the man he could be. And oftentimes we destroy people before we get to see their legacy extended to something greater because we always talking about counseling instead of challenging people. Mm. I challenge you to be greater, mm. right? I'm not going to counsel you because of your faults. You're supposed to go through those lessons. The question is, who do you become after those lessons? Because mm. now we get to say, I'm glad he made that mistake. Now let me see what he does next, right? But we say, oh, he made a mistake. Let's get him out of there. That's not how great ones are made. Mm. Otherwise, we would have nobody great in none of our histories because we would take those singular moments that is now seen in the broadcast and the sheep that have made the same exact mistakes or similar ones was hold this person up to an expectation that they don't hold themselves up and then want to destroy you. It goes back to the old saying, you can't throw stones in a glass house, mm, 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 right? Mm. And everybody living in these glass houses, but they want to throw stones as if, you know, they sins and they flaws are not equal to the person that they judging. So for me, you know, just going back to the Malcolm thing, I think Malcolm was a man that was in the route of his development. Mm. And the government killed him before we even got to see his full development. Mm. And by killing him and assassinating him, we didn't get to see the full development of the black nation and the black culture and this black conscious movements that we had grown. We seen it stop at certain points when leaders were killed and people held on to that. They didn't think about the maturation of what it would have been if they would have continued and prolonged. Because we don't need what was there at the end point. We need what would have happened if they stayed living. Mm. Yo, it's, you touch on so much, bro. And this is crazy because you're going crazy. We're like 10 minutes in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hold up. All right. So we talk about not canceling somebody, right? Mm -hmm. 
But like I feel like, like you said, you you can't really tell who a person is until you see how they act in a moment of mm-hmm. adversity. Like that's who you, how you, how you could tell who a man is, right? When he go through something, when he got his back against the wall. Mm-hmm. But it's also funny because we talked about the the Malcolm X um, comparison or just com- talking about Malcolm X, and I feel like the nation kicked him out because he what he didn't abide by certain rules, and I, I don't know the the full um, story behind it. But he was kicked out because he didn't like, basically like follow the rules of the nation, right? It's a very nuanced story, but you got to think, in, and, and not even to personalize it to Malcolm, it happens in any organization. Yes. In any organization. No, no one man is ever bigger than the program. Exactly. Right? The goal wasn't to follow, right, Malcolm X. The goal was to follow the program that would get us to where we need to be. Exactly. Now, many people contextualize it 50 years later after his assassination, right? But if he was alive, would you follow him? Mm. Right? And some people say, yeah. I don't believe you at all because who do you follow while you living today? Mm. You're telling me that there's not programs, there's not teachings that he followed, there's not blueprints to where you to walk in that same path, right? So it's like the Nation of Islam, its goal was for black people to be able to have freedom, justice, and equality in Islam and the nation within a nation, right? That was its goal, mm. right? Malcolm X said that his goal later was to build human rights. But at the same time, he tried to get back in connection and he was in communication to have that consolation with the nation, right? That was disrupted, right, by outside forces that didn't want to see that rejoining of those black minds come together because what would have been the most powerful thing is that that collaboration came back again. That unity was was brought back to the forefront. When you got to think about the future, because right now, like, we focus on building out this 2044 plan. Mm. If you want to control the future, don't just think 10 years ahead. You got to think 20, 30 years. It changes the way you think about the future. So the question is, it's like, all right, the longevity of Malcolm's plan, and then people always talk Malcolm, but you also have to talk Elijah Muhammad every sure, time. 100%. Right? So you have to say, what was Elijah Muhammad's plan? What was he doing? Mm. Right? Because I think that that's a more important part of that conversation. Right? He loved Malcolm X, right? But he had a plan that wasn't political, right? His plan was to create a nation to where we were a separate entity and we had ownership and class of our own, right? And he had an economic blueprint for that. He had businesses that he already had developed. They were bringing in millions and millions of dollars, right? He had a plan for black people to get reparations. He advocated that every single chance that he got, but he also understood that we wouldn't find no freedom, justice, or equality in politics, mm. right? He believed that we was going to do that in doing for self, right? And nobody else on this planet Earth can show me a man and his teachings that have reformed and transformed the world greater, right, than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the last 100 years. Mm. Not one. And it's funny that we don't talk about that legacy more because it's like, the question becomes is who is this man and how the hell he do it? How you go from having a third grade education, growing up on a small farm, right? Seeing your parents get attacked by the Ku Klux Klan, right? Starting off as a, in, in a Baptist religion, right? And then getting some knowledge of self and then that transforming you from a mission from a three and a half year stay from your master teacher, right? And then you go and teach the world and it actually works, mm. right? And he didn't just teach about what we're t- talking now on pi. He taught about astronomy. He mm. taught about economics. He was the first to have this conversation about UFOs, mm. right? The first. And you're talking about a man coming up in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. This is a very interesting fact about our history in America that it's, sh- it's not talked about because it's overshadowed by the assassination of Malcolm X. Mm. The question is, what are the more important conversations for the future? And, and and it's funny because that's the conversation I wanted to have. Not necessarily the future. You introduced that, but not about Malcolm X and what he did, but just that relationship between him getting kicked out of the nation because he didn't follow the rules, whatever the rules may be. Right? I'm trying to be respectful. Well, I think it was a it was a it was it's a very known thing. It was simple. They asked him not to speak on certain political situations. He spoke on it, mm-hmm. right? And that was a situation where he had to be silenced for uh, a certain amount of days, and then. He spoke again during his silencing period. So it was like a double action. And then that created a conflict but that transformed into multiple things. That right there, though, right? We talk about these greats and, 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 for lack of better words, loving them through and seeing their potential. 
And it's kind of like we we all have to go. It seems like the yeah. greats have to go through it because the same thing. It ain't about the reason why. It's just the fact that it happened, right? Mm -hmm. He went against the nation, right? And he had to be silenced for it. And mm -hmm. it's like still to this day, it's like history repeats itself in different ways, right? Like it's like we talk about when being canceled and how we should, I don't know, love people through it or wait to see see them on the other side. But it's like it's the same thing. People are used to something. The world has rules, right, that we think are normal. And when you go against those rules or whatever we think, whatever the most people deem is normal, then you get silenced for it. And it's like, ah. What is the balance? What's the in between? It's, it's, it's different if you're thinking about the way the nation silenced you. It wasn't kicking you out. It was it was a period of mm. saying that it, you're not silenced forever. It could be 30 days. It could be 60 days. Mm. Right? And why? You have to think about the way entities and organizations are formed. Right? And you have to think about, because it's not a bad thing. If America wanted to silence you because you was promoting pedophilia and then you get canceled, yes, because we don't want that culture to be normalized. For sure. That's great. That goes against, that will be anti-culture. That's the extreme. Right? Right. Let's go to social media. That's exactly. the extremes, right? But that's what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with voices that are outspoken, and if they don't follow along with mainstream thought, then they get counseled, right? But who is behind the counseling? Who decides, right, who is the ultimate, you know, person that can control media and get everybody to be on their side to say that we don't like this voice, get rid of them. Don't do business with them. Don't give them no ad dollars. Nothing. Mm. Right? We was at Revolt World. Why Revolt World sponsored by Walmart, not AT&T like they were? Because mm. AT&T decided to say that, no, we're not going to continue to support you because we don't like some things you're doing on your platform. Mm. Right? So it's, it's an economic, right, silencing that we deal with. Now, when you're talking about any organization on the planet Earth has to have rules in order to maintain structure and order, right? right? And balance. Why? Because when you create an entity, you create it with rules. You create it with these rituals that have to be maintained and sustained so that the foundation that the organization is built on is not destroyed, mm. right? So when you're talking about coming up in a militant discipline, yes, the generals and the soldiers have to move in accordance, right, to the interests, right, of the goals of that nation. They can't go against the goals of that nation. Like I said, I love Malcolm X. To this day, he's one of the greatest tours ever to exist. And I just think that the conversation is being the dead horse because I believe if Malcolm was here today, he would be supporting the upliftment of black people in America. No, for sure. Right? He would be supporting the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam would be supportive of him. I think that any black man that stands up for the people should always be supported. I think that we look at one point of history and time with a lack of reconciliation, and that doesn't benefit us to have the conversations about the, those times. It benefits them that that becomes a reason that we're not connected. Mm -hmm. says his legacy is not his assassination. His legacy is the life that he lived, right, and his intervention for us to have freedom, justice, and equality. Malcolm X was great because he was able to do great things. He was able to go speak around the world and he was able to teach himself. He read that he read and consumed the dictionary so that he could have a better vocabulary to communicate to the masses. Right. When they looked at his autopsy, they said he had one of the cleanest bodies that they ever seen. That mean he was eating right. He was he was a man that was trying to live to a certain moral constitution. We're studying the wrong parts of his life, mm -hmm. the greater parts of his life to be in admiration of is what made him great, right? Not the opposition that went against him. The mm -hmm. opposition went against him because if we had a million Malcolm X in the world, if we had 19 million Malcolm X, if we had a, a, a however many black men in America were like him, then we would solve our issues. Mm -hmm. We're not going to solve them by asking what was the issue between him and the only standing nation that we have in between us, right, in light and darkness? Mm. But not even, see, that's why I said, because it's not really about him versus the nation. I, I just use that just as an example of, like, I think when I even hear you say it, it's like, I hear the first thing that popped my mind is like, that's the price of freedom, right? Because when you are able to do, the, the United States have rules and things that we have to abide by. In the moment, social media, in the moment we step out of the, the step out of the line, it's like, the... But they you punish know, us for it. They slap us in the wrist. And I'm just wondering, like, the where, where's the, the power, middle? though? I think this, mm. this is where we, this is where the people lose. You got to ask yourself, do, do you think that people really want to be free? That's the masses. Great, that's, I think they think they want to be free, but with freedom comes so much. It comes. There has to be a duty to freedom. What's your action that says you want to be free? Mm. I'm not talking, like, I, everybody wants to be a millionaire. 
right? But do you really, do you really want to put in the work, mm. right? What's required for freedom is the question. Everybody mm. wants to be rich, right? But are you willing to fight and put up your ideas and fight through entrepreneurship and go network and go do all of those different things that's required to be the boss and to manage mm. your ideas to get to that point? Everybody ain't willing to do that, nope. right? Everybody would love to be a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, Right. But you can't handle that stress. Mm. So freedom comes with that price of the action of being free. Mm. Right. You everybody can be free. Just be free. You know what I'm saying? You might live shorter if you're free. Mm. Do what you want to live longer as a slave. Mm. Right. So it's not about the consequences of being free. It's just about being free. Mm. Right. So if I die tomorrow, I'd rather have died building the legacy that I got now than a man who was not going to be remembered because he did nothing to show that he was free. Mm. Right. I'm not free because, you know, somebody makes a proclamation in 1865 to say we free in Juneteenth and I got to celebrate that. No, I'm free because, you know, I get to activate and do God's will on, while I'm living in the land of devils. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I get to speak how I want to, move how I want to, do business with my family, connect who I want to, go around who I want to. I was taught that heaven is money, good home, friendships of all walks of life. When I'm obliged mama say all walks of life, I had to think about who are the all walks of life? It's people all across this planet. Mm. Money, because you need resources to protect what you build and to build, right? Those ideas that you have in your head. So we have to think about what is it required to be free? And the masses don't all want to be free. Mm. There's technology that comes along all the time that says, hey, this comes with the promise of being free if you utilize it a certain way. Mm. People were taught about cryptos and blockchains. And look at the thing with NFTs. Mm. People were happy that... The source said that mainstream media said that NFTs failed. And it's like, was that the whole point of the technology was to empower the creatives, to cut out institutional middlemen, mm. right? So that you could have more money, so that you can be empowered over and control over your intellectual property. Isn't that the ideas around Web3? But a people that really wanted to be free go pick up the tools for their freedom, mm. right? That's how I know if you're going to be free. If you want to be free... And somebody gives you the keys to your shackle, what you gonna do? Mm. You gonna use that goddamn key to unshackle yourself and be free. Or the person don't really wanna be free, you can give them all the keys, they ain't gonna never unlock themselves. Mm. That's a fact. Now, it's, I think people have the idea of being free wrong, though, sometimes. I feel like even like when we talk about these rules of not just, again, that was just a small example of me comparing the world, right? Mm -hmm. Is just because you have rules don't make you free. And just because you, like, again, if we're talking play for familiar and we ban you from social media, that don't mean you're not free or you don't have, we hear this, uh, what's the word, free speech. That don't that don't mean that you you aren't free or you can't do what you want. It's just that we have rules in place. Yeah, well, there's, there's consequence, right? So you can tell a person is free by their ability to control their mind and their will, mm. right? All right, so you go into a job, and you can't dress how you want to. You can't speak how you're not free to do whatever you want. What you are free to do is leave, this right? Is. Mm. So you have certain liberties, right? But you don't have complete freedom, mm. right? And sometimes there's a give and a take when it comes to that. Like, what is the requirements to maintain your freedom, right? And what is freedom to you? Because it means something different. There's some people who have an imperative that, I have to speak truth. Otherwise, it'll make me sick. And then there's other people who are more introverted. I don't want to say nothing. I internalize my things. I work behind the scene. Mm. Freedom to us means different things. Freedom to me, like, I can't be in a room without speaking the truth. Freedom to you is, if I'm forced to speak, then I feel like a slave. If I'm forced to do something that somebody else wants me to do, then I don't feel like myself. Right? Freedom is following along, right, with your natural innate human features, right, that make you unique in who you are, your ability to pull out one potential. So in the communities that we grow up in, when we grow up in env impoverished environments with a lack of resources, we're not free because we don't have the tools to bring out that which we are, to bring out that God within. So we mm -hmm. don't feel free. A black man that is told to limit himself, Right, a black woman that is told to limit herself because this is not a what a safe space. Mm. They don't feel what they don't feel free mm. to be who they are. Who are you? You're naturally a righteous being. And even I think to uh, piggyback or to, to add veggie more content. What did you call it? Back. Oh, yeah. So to add to it, add more content. I feel like I feel like, and and this is the goal to that too. I feel like 
freedom is the ability to make a decision, but but not to, but not to make the decision decision at all, right? Like, yeah, I could speak if I want to, but I decide not to. I think that's freedom as well. But even like you said, I think I heard one of your com- um, conversations. You were saying like the hardest thing for Muslims a long time ago was letting 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 go white women and not eating bacon, right? Well, I say Muslims, but just. Black people, I said. Well, let's say black people. I think you said Muslims. No, no, no. Muslims, big, uh, if they Muslim, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't on the bacon and already, and they ain't on the white women already. Yeah, I think you said something about people who have I'm to I'm talking about the... them wanting to join and become a Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about people who weren't Muslims. Okay, okay. All right. People that wanted, <laughs> so that was that was the hardest thing, right? Yeah. But I think being able to do that, right, even, though, even if you can, I think that's when you unlock something else. Because I can do what I want, but I choose not to. Right. And I think a lot of times what happened is when we talk about this conversation, I don't know if you hear it a lot. I'm sure, sure you do. People always say, I'm not religious. I'm more spiritual. Mm. I think that's an excuse. Because now you choose to do whatever you want. Yeah. And somebody that, that do, does whatever they want, how can like how can we look at them with any type of respect or regard? Yeah, because the idea of do whatever you will, that doesn't come from God. Idealistically, that comes from what we see in theological texts is the devil, mm. right? Do what thou wilt, right? That's some Alistair Crowley devil worshiping type. Shit. That's where that saying comes from. Mm. So when you got a society that pushes that narrative, that's called an agenda, mm. right? So when you have a culture that does that, they only going to do that when they don't have morals. Mm. Do whatever you want. Oh, my morals don't allow me to do that. You know what I'm saying? My morals won't allow me to sell out. Your morals won't allow you to sell yourself. Your Mm. morals won't allow you to demean yourself, right? Because you have virtues, right? You have values. You have principles. You have morals. You have goals. So, no, I'm not just going to do whatever. Is you crazy? Mm. Is you tripping? No, I'm going to do the things that are in line with my God self. You can serve two masters, your lower self or your higher self, Mm. right? That devil is something that exists and dwells within man. Right? It's inclinations within our nature of what levels of consciousness that we serve, our lower or our higher. Mm. So it's not so much about, you know, doing what you will and you being free and I'm supposed to be able to do what I feel liberated because I'm doing this. Who taught you that definition of liberation? Mm. How all of a sudden we have a new definition of liberation that don't really empower you, mm. right? All it does is allow you the feeling of being right in connection to your desires, right? A desire based control a desire-based society was not made by you know god or whatever it was made by capitalism right these was masters of psychology who understand society and the dark side of society and people having this inclination to want to live out their desires without consequence and so this is where we are today right we look like most of the culture looks like we follow the devil don't look like we follow god Right. And we have all of these things to back up. They can do whatever they want. Stop judging them. Isn't the idea of most religious contexts that there's a day of judgment? Mm. The judgment was this idea of this battle within as well, that you judge yourself when you do things that go against your nature. So to remove the judgment, now you don't have a system of accountability. So now you do whatever you want, whether it's destructive or constructive. Bro, and we can be and this is the because we can agree to disagree or be on different sides, however you want to say it, right? You Muslim, I'm Christian, but I think at the end of the day, that's it. You said it earlier. That comes from the devil. In my perspective, he he gives it, he makes it feel good. He don't make it hard, right? He make it feel good. So, okay, you could do whatever you want. Be liberated or whatever you want to call it. That's the devil work. Mm -hmm. Because then you can go against all of the teachings of Whatever you believe in, yeah. because every every religion has rules. They they got some type of thing that you gotta follow. You right? Be on demon bike. time or God's time. People just making choices, and you gotta believe them. I'm not. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. It's, you, nobody ever. I've never seen even a movie talking about they go go to hell and save the demons. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's ever tried to go to hell and save demons, right? No, it's it's over with. They work for the devil. You don't try to save the devil's children. Mm. They supposed to burn in the fire, not from a physical place. But for me, I think about that is you have generations that are depressed, that have anxiety, that are stressed the hell out because they work for the devil. Mm. Right. And then they get money. The devil gives them money. Yep. They give them all the things that they desire and but not they the, none of the things that they need. And, the, and you know, it's crazy because the devil, do, the, I, I was just talking about this. The devil do that. People come out and they be like, thanks to God. That wasn't God. We was taught that our people love the devil because the devil gives them nothing. 
And nothing can look like something, though. Yeah, it looks like a whole lot, but they got nothing, and that's why you have depressed billionaires. That's why they, they be out there committing suicide, and it looked like they had it all. They had nothing because mm, mm, they ain't had no God. They ain't had no connection to God. If you don't have God, you have nothing. Empty. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, Right. They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Yo, um, all right. So I had a whole situation how I wanted to do this interview, right? So I wanted to get to know you, right? We we, we, we got into some some conversation, but I'm going uh, I'm to a, I'm a scale back for a second. I'm going to say something. Right, I'm gonna uh, say a sentence, a statement, and I just want to get the first thing that comes to your mind. If you want to explain it, you can. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's short, that's fine. All right. So, um, the first thing I was thinking about was uh, true masculinity. What, what what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear that? Purpose. For me, it's purpose. Like true masculinity is a man living within purpose. Mm. Right, like you're designed for something. You're here for a reason, and you're going to live up to that. You're going to live on your edge. You're going to move with purpose. You're going to act with purpose. You're going to believe with purpose, because when you know your purpose, you know what you're here for. Mm. Right, this is your purpose. Right, this is what I'm meant to do, and I'm going to stand, live, and die for that. Mm. Right, and there's nobody and nothing that can get in my way, because I'm a man of purpose. Mm. Right, because that's what truth is. Right, truth is the reality of something. Right, it's the substance, the, the 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 realness of it. So, when you talk about you know masculinity, it's just mas to be masculine is the typical traits of a man. Man meaning mind. Man is not even just describing the males, but it describes the human beings, the humans themselves. Man. So when you're talking about what of our typical traits, right? It's our ability to survive, our ability to procreate, right? Now, once you get past survival. Right now, you're going to a place of thriving. You're going to a place of imagination. You're going to a place where I see it, and then I do it. Living in right? a deep state of conscience. Yeah, that's when you go to, you know, like what they say, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 3, 14. I don't be knowing verse Bibles like Come that. On, but I man. that the Come on, you feel man. Come on, man. What they say, <laughs> I am. I am is the language of God. Come on. You know what I'm saying? When man has the ability to possess the I am, mm. you feel me? He knows his purpose. He can evoke his will into reality, mm. right? And then that's when he can stand on something that means something. So when I say, when I think about masculinity, I'm thinking about a man standing in his purpose, mm. right? Tapping into what his mind was designed for, which was to produce things into reality and protect those things that you produce. Come on, that's crazy that you said that because I was I was like, man, I want to prepare for this interview, but I want to get my mind in the right state, in the right state. So I started reading uh, the way of the superior man again, mm, right? Yeah, and the fact that you, you hit it, you kind of hit it right on that yeah, nose, right? Fire. But in that being said, then we gotta ask, what's what was the what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear true femininity, though? Is virtue. Virtue, right? When I think about a woman that is virtuous, right? A woman that is in connection, right, to nature. Uh, a woman that possesses the ability to produce and nurture life. When it has in full connection to her power and her essence, she can speak life, mm. right? Think about nature. Nature doesn't create like man does. Nature doesn't define things in straight lines. That's not nature's job. Nature's job is to grow. It moves. It it's moves. to flow. Mm -hmm. Any restriction of nature, right, it cuts down the ability for nature to grow. You put a snake in a box, right? It's not until you give that snake a larger environment then that snake can grow and outshed things, mm -hmm. right? Woman is the same thing. If you put her in a box, she's only going to grow to this, 
right? But if you give her the world as her garden, then she can tend to things that's in connection to her nature to allow things to grow. So for me, when I think about a woman, I think about love. Mm. Right. I think about, you know, the qualities that allow things to grow into existence and to become everything that they're supposed to be. The white woman. Imagine if every time you walked outside, woman was like, bro, I see you, Jay. Mm. You killing it right now. You are an amazing man and you have power. Man, you'll walk back home like, damn, damn, I can do this. Mm. She going in vigor. It ain't the same when a man tells you. Mm. Right. But when a woman tells you, man, she sow so many seeds in you. And the thing about seeds is that, see, a person can drop a bad seed and they can drop a good seed. Somebody can come around the homeboys and be like, man, you know, so-and-so hating on you, bro. He don't really want to see you win. And now while you up, you know, hey, man, that's the homie. What are you talking about? Now, what about when you down? Come and you on, start man. thinking about that. Now that seed starts to take in like, damn, man, these niggas probably is hating on me, man. Come bro, on. I was right. And then so when a woman plants them good seeds in you, it don't matter when you down, them the ones that's going to hit the most. Like, you know what? You're right, baby. I am who I am. Mm -hmm. Nothing going to stop me. I am right? who I am. Yes, it's sir. It's going to make you invisible. You can't prove you a man unless you have a woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how would man know who he is unless he had an opposite of who he was? Mm. Right? That's our reflection. Everything in the cosmos was created with balance. Right? We have day. We have night. We have man. We have woman. We have one. We have nine. We have up. We have down. Right? So the confirmation of our existence and our totality, that I am a God, she is a God. Right? And we both have different functions and different purposes. The mechanics of our biology was made to show us what we're here for. Mm. Right? We seed into her, and then she takes that life and she produces and grows things. Mm. The most unnatural thing today is our war, right, against each other. That represents our rebellion to God. Bro, you bugging right now. I, I, I say that, but, right, like, because... In these, we hear these podcasts all the time, high level man, masculine versus, and it's crazy because we putting it, we putting ourselves against each other. But in all honesty, not even taking femininity out of just woman, we need it both to be whole though. It's the expression. It's the flow of all things. Come you know on. what I'm saying? Nothing flows without the feminine possession. Masculinity a lot of time can be forced pushing things. When your life has flow, I man, you got a woman in your life, you got some flow in your life. Mm. You know what I mean? Go find me a man that ain't got no women in his life. He frustrated. So <laughs> what what that's a fact. What is a high value man then? <laughs> what, what is that? What what would you what would you I mean, I I I, I would say it simply because I feel like this topic is already over discussed, man. That's not even that's a um I would <laughs> say you know, it's just a man who who is bonded with his word, right? And it's a man who's going to stand for something and he's going to do it. And it's somebody that you can believe because it's not about his words, it's about his actions. Okay. A high value man, if you want to say anything, it has to be a man that has a deep connection with God and he moves like one as well. I know you're not going to know this answer. It might be rhetorical, bro. So why are we, like, not we, but it's like the world pushing something totally different, bro. Or they come to, like, it's always in connection with what a woman shouldn't be doing, making a woman soft and feminine. And it's like, bro, what are we talking about? Mm. Like, I, I don't, if you could, you have a lot of conversations. You have a lot of high level conversations. We, 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 we're begging for the right answers, that's all. Right, because so much of our knowledge and our legacies have been stolen from us. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to see the culture is, is, is in a dire point in time right now, and people are begging for guidance, and they don't know how, so they talk about what they know. Because wisdom is when you know what you don't know. So you go ask more questions and try to give more answers. So we having circular arguments about the same thing because we don't know. So we just talk about what we know, the trauma, the issues, the problems. So when we start to possess and we have a wise, the wisdom was only going to come when the youth are connected to the elders, mm. right? The youth are not the wise. They're the rebellious. And they're supposed to be rebellious because they're supposed to lead the charge, right? But when the elders, not older, older is just you get up there in age, but when you're elder, you get up there in wisdom. Mm. And then you have this knowledge that over time has been concentrated and been reflected on and been refined, and then you can pass that down to somebody else so now they can move with wisdom beyond their years. So would you say that a high level, and this is probably drawn out, but just thinking about it, hearing you speak, would you say a high level man understands the moment when he don't know? He has that wisdom? One would hope so. I mean, that's part of being, you know, uh, wise and growing. I ask that 
because not to cut you off. I only ask that because like I got the serenity prayer tatted on me, right? Yeah, that was my grandma's favorite prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, mm -hmm. the courage to change the things I I can, but the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you about this, about the platform and the things that we're pushing. With you, it seems like everything is positive for the progression of our people, which is dope. But seeing all these platforms and people, they, they only pushing what they know. But are you really high level if you if you're only pushing what you know, but you're so ignorant to the things that you don't know and you're not even open to, to understanding the things that you don't know. I don't know who said they was high level in the first place. A lot of these. If 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 I go put on <laughs> if I put on a white coat right now, right, with a tag that says Dr. Keys, does not mean I'm a doctor. If I can't perform and I don't have the knowledge, right, and the pedigree that a doctor has, right? It does not matter what title you give yourself, mm. right? It's how you perform. It's your knowledge and your activation of that knowledge that says who you are, right? Because you can be a bad doctor. You can be a good doctor. So there are good and bad in every situation as well. There are some doctors who are crap. You don't want them to touch you surgically. And then there are some who are world class. And if you don't know no better, it's some doctors that are given that, that, that position because they want to speak, right? But we well, they may be better at speaking and talking medicine than they are performing it. But, but if you don't know the difference, you could... And there's nothing wrong with that. It's that that person, that should be his purpose. Right. Right, because this doctor may be better at it, but he can't communicate. Exactly. The thing is when you need to connect the experience and actions of the excellence, right, with the communication, so they're not getting it from your experience level. They're getting it from the highest level. Mm. All right, get back to it. Damn, this is crazy. All right. Um, so when we talk about, I was curious to get, because I'm, I think I seen somewhere where you said you um monogamous, right? You practice monogamy. Mm -hmm. And we hear every time we talk about like men and having multiple wives, we hear Muslim, right? And mm -hmm. I was wondering, what is your thoughts on polygamy? Mm. Well, you know, 50% of marriages work out. You know, um, so monogamy has its place in the world because it's an institution that works for many. Right, 50% of people that get in it, it's a 50-50 chance it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. But then there's a 50-50 chance it won't. I think we all customize at different levels and scales. We live in a society that generalizes everything. Facts. And that generalization does not take into account, right, the customization of who you are. Doesn't care about your sign, doesn't care about your personality type, your human design, doesn't care about your psychological background, your preference, none of that. There's a the general assumption of that if you don't follow this, we're going to grade you good or bad. Mm. Some people, I believe, and maybe a small percentage of people on this planet Earth, they're not built for monogamy. There's no way that you can tell me, and there's no science to back up that every person on the planet Earth is built for monogamy. It's an institution, it's a rule, it's, a, it's traditionalism. And I think that it's good and it should be instilled because I think what it does is it allows us to nation build on a level to where we have some discipline. But I have to take into account the percentage of the planet Earth who are not built like that. Mm. And when you take into that account, you look at the people who are not doing it successfully. One mm. would have to say maybe they're not built for it, right? And then you want to have the counter argument to say, I am, prove it. That's it. Now, so when we get to the conversation about monogamy, it's not just Muslim. We're looking at, you know, our ancestral intelligence. Polygamy. Or polygamy. When we're looking at it, you're going to look at African countries, right? And you're going to see them practicing it, right? I just left Ghana. In Ghana, somebody told me I need to have 22 wives, mm. right? You got that much money? I ain't got no time. <laughs> hey, 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 now. I ain't got to have no 22 wives. Maybe 19. This guy. No, I'm just kidding. messing with you. I'm going to do monogamy. But, you know, I believe that, you know, you have to look at these different structures and orders across the planet Earth. But I believe that here in America, we have to start with the foundation of one. Mm. If you can't make a relationship work with one person, what makes you think you're going to make it work with two? Mm. Right. And then you have to look at the qualifications of people who can even meet the standard to even begin to have a conversation because it has to go to financial has to go to emotional and the spiritual, mm. right? Do you even have the ability to meet those qualifications? When we look at the percentage of people who would even meet it, it would be so low, right? That you should just allow them people to handle their business and you handle yours because you don't even fit that criteria. Mm. So I believe that, you know, 
um, if the world can support gay marriage, and I think they can support a person having multiple marriages, especially when we have a society where people have multiple baby mamas but no responsibility or accountability to their family. Mm. I think um, monogamy is super important because of discipline too, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And um, this isn't to go against what nobody practiced, but I think it's important for men especially because we should we should have that discipline. Do you think do you think if you survey a million men, what percentage of them you think would say that if you gave them the option of polygamy, how many of them you think would practice it? If they believe it was going to be a successful I mean, situation. Honestly, I would say probably nine hundred thousand. Mm. So ninety percent. So this is why, as you say, discipline has to be in order because the average man, right, and I know Muslims, Christians, Asians, all of them around Men, the world. Period. If you do a survey, but nobody cares what a man wants, that's not the empathy of the nation. The empathy of the nation is that you have to have discipline regardless of what you want, mm. right? So that goes back to the conversation to do what you want. Facts. We don't really believe in that, right? Because if men were to practice, and some people would say, well, you already do it, right? Let's take that away, right? Let's take that off the table. Uh, you, you know, when the rule goes against what you naturally want, people break those rules because it's not acceptable behavior. Say right? that one more time. So look at the way women do sexual liberation, right? They say, well, I need to be half naked, show my ass, be sexually free to be with whoever I want to. Right. Because society said that we shouldn't do that. And we judged if we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So they believe that that's liberation when you go against those rules and those conflicts that was said to you. Right. That makes you respectable and makes you valuable. Right. Men, if you go survey most of them and I'm talking about from a heart to heart, whether they could be successful at it, whether they should. Idealistically, a lot of men. Right. Would say that, yeah, I would practice polygamy. Right. Especially if I grew up in a world with it. Right. So that means idealistically, a lot of men want to practice polygamy. Mm. Right. But society says it's not. So that means that if men were to go through a so-called liberation movement, then they will practice liberation in connection to what they think is natural for them. Mm. But that's not where we at. And, and nor do I think that that's where we should be. Right. I believe that it should be into the practice of monogamy. But I'm a thought leader. I like to think about things, whether it's my perspective, whether it's the other. I like to reflect upon all these different thoughts. Right. Nah, it's like when you go back in time, we have philosophers. So in a lot of things I'm a philosopher on, it's the art of thinking for me. So this is why when you ask questions, I usually have already answered because I thought about it mm. already. I've reflected upon these things. So this is why I'm not always answering from a personal standpoint. I'm answering from an empathetic standpoint, putting myself in other people's shoes, putting myself in this generation's shoes where the deconstruction of relationships, ideas around relationships are completely brand new today. Let's let's talk about that, though. You 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 somebody who big on saying you are like zero zero point one. Right. Mm -hmm. like, that's what you. Oh, that's just a statistical fact, though. Cool. I, I didn't make me in the night. Oh, I did make me in the I feel like we all are, though. Yeah, not everybody. But that's a different... We all are. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. Statistical fact, we are. Literally. It depends Nobody on what, has It your... depends on what category. We're Statistically, we are human beings. I mean, like, categorically, we are human beings. And we're all 0, but, 0. 0.1. But, nobody has... Nobody sees things... Well, they can see things the way you see it. Nobody has your exact blood. Nobody has yeah. your exact thoughts at the exact time. Nobody has the... Ex like... Nobody is Yeah, you. but most people are just general manufactured carbon copies of society. Somebody else too. You know what I'm saying? You know, every you can make every machine is not exactly the same, of course. Right? But they all usually have the same function. It's how you use that machine. Facts. That's what makes you rare. How you express yourself. And most people don't maximize or express themselves in an original way to where they increase their rareness or their value. Because most people are regurgitating shit that they see or even they hear or even they read, to be honest. Which like, would be fine if it was the right thing. That's ah, I can't. if you follow if you follow something good, but speak what do a good you word. believe in though? Like again, not to go back like Malcolm X, like uh uh Martin Luther King, like but what do you believe in? Yeah, you can follow something, but what do you believe in? That's what makes you different in my in my perspective. Well, the only way, I mean, you can say that, but how can a person say they know what they believe in outside of being influenced by beliefs, right? Because we have different environments, different parents. All of these inform who we are. But doing your due diligence to find out what you don't like. Doing it's the your way, due diligence. It's the way you take things and the way you express them, right? You can tell me something, 
depending on my level of consciousness, experience, and reflection, I want to do something different with that information or that knowledge than somebody else would, mm. right? So it's not so much what you know, it's about what you do with what you know, right? So it's like you give two people the Bible and they may have completely different interpretations of it, right? Same thing with the Quran. So, you know, but they can both do good with it. Mm. They could have seen two different perspectives. That's your personality that seems that, well, this is the part of the war I'm going to fight. And you decide to fight that part. Doesn't make one more valuable than the other. It doesn't. Like, and like you said, it's about what you do with it. Because even we, we had these conversations about the goat gene. And I'm going to go back to monogamy, I promise. Um, but Because I definitely want to hit back into that. But we talk about this goat gene and what you do with it. A lot of times being that 0, 0. 0.1 type person, just through my experience, nothing makes them different than the work that they put in. We look at Tom Brady. We look at Michael Jordan. We look at, uh, I don't, I don't, I can, Kobe Bryant. We look at the greats, the Malcolm X's, the, 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 the Martin Luther King's, the Marcus Garvey's, like everybody that was great. It wasn't that they, they were any different than you and I or somebody else's, what they did with their knowledge. And that's why I say a lot of times people just regurgitating. But that also makes them great as well. Because a lot of times a person ain't filled with nothing, so they can't do nothing. Facts. So it's like, you know, Facts. it could be two cups on the table, both filled with a liquid substance. You won't know till you drink them, right? But they both fill with something different. The potential of them are almost equal to the same. I can quench my thirst. But one may have some goddamn nootropics in there that's going to light my brain up and have me super energized. One may just be full of sugar. I'm going to be energized and then come down. Mm. When I think about people, I think about the substance of what they made of, right? And you can only activate based on your substance. You got to right? go get so, it. Yeah, if you tell two people to go do the same thing, it depends on the amount of knowledge that they have and their ability to execute that thing at a high level. Or the when ability. I look at great ones, I look at what they went through and then how they activated what they went through. Yeah. So the specialness, you're right, it is in the motion, right? You're only as good as the work that you do, right? But what did you have before you went into motion, right? So like before I touch the social media thing, I'm studying marketing, I'm studying branding. So, yeah, you wanted to study it. I mean, you wanted to tap into it and do it, but you didn't. What did you do in preparation? What was that time you spent in the womb? The womb is not just the time you spend in your mother's stomach, right? The womb is the time you spend in the darkness preparing for the light. So a lot of those people went through so much darkness, harnessing it. And then when it was time for them to get in the light, that's why you seen they were special mm. and they shine different. I think, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm saying. But go back to um your, uh, your point on polygamy, right, or uh, monogamy. I feel like the opposite of what you said, right? Most people would say yes, but that's why I want to be monogamous in a way because I do, and I'm going to say this just honestly, like I think I am a part of or should be a part of that 1% is however we say it, right? I, that's who I know I am, right? In order to be that person, I have to walk a line of just be different, right? Mm -hmm. I understand. I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. I'm engaged and shit, this woman out here that looked great, amazing. But I know that I, the person I want to be and the person I want to die, the legacy I want to leave, I want them to say, Jay was this, 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 and then polygamy. I mean, monogamy is one of them things. Say I was faithful to one person. You get what I'm saying? And and yeah, and that's because of the way you grew up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's because and when you look at a person, it's it's like... It's a, a the CIA do a thing where they get a dossier on a person. They look at their background, look at their, who they are, their mm -hmm. parents, their beliefs, the way they think. So they be like, this makes sense because in his foundation, this is what he's seen, this is what he grew up in, this is why this belief became hard, and this is how the type of household that he went through. Everybody has different experiences, mm. right? So it's like my brother Stephen Speaks was explaining discipline. He said discipline for two men could be completely different. Mm. If you're somebody who greatly believes in monogamy, Right. And that's just that's like who you are. Right. It takes way less discipline than a man who don't really believe in it, but he believe it's the right thing to do. Right. So it's going to require him more discipline. Then add on top of that man has a lot of money, a lot of influence, a power. Lot of emotion. Right. So now the temptation is higher because there are so many more women that want him. Right. So his discipline level has to be higher. Right. Then a man, let's say, you say you're just the average man and he believes in this thing. Right. Or he's not, you know, on social media. Nobody really knows. He's not dealing with the same temptation. So it's like for me, it's just taking in the the empathy that we're all different. So the requirements of each man is not the same. No, that's a fact. Right. And that's all the point that I come from, because like I said, I believe in monogamy, but I'm speaking on it from a standpoint of thinking about how we're all different a lot of times and why, 
you know, you can't villainize one man and say he's better than the other because he doesn't practice what you practice because you don't know what's required for that man to do the same thing for you to do. But it ain't about villainizing, right? It's about holding each other accountable. But and we like, villainizing in society. That's why it's illegal. Oh, no facts. But I'm talking about our conversation. Yeah. We're not villainizing. Like, but polygamy is literally illegal, right? In, 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 in what, 49 states? So it's already villainized because for you to do it, you'll be practicing something that's illegal in mm. the Western world. That's a great point. So that's why I speak on it in that manner. It's the same way of anything that's illegal. People look at it as immoral when it's illegal. I speak on it in a point to challenge men to be great because, like you said, for all of those reasons, it is hard, especially if you're out here and you got motion. It's hard as hell, but that's what makes you great because you're not, you're not doing everybody. I feel like most people... I can't speak for the world, so I mean, I say that. A lot of people in my circle that I know would love to practice polygamy, right? Shit, I would have loved it at one point in time, and it's still, it'd be tempting to be keeping it all the way 100. But that's the that's the very much reason why I don't want to do it, because it's so tempting, right? And I understand that that's what's going to, a part of what makes me great. And I feel like I want to challenge other and people I to do the same that. thing. I respect that. I, and I think that that's a that's an honorable thing. And I believe that we should focus on, you know, one Right. And we should figure out how we can master that domain before mm. we even have any more conversations around this subject. Mm. <coughs> Bless you. Oh. <coughs> Bless you. Oh. But if you was born in Africa, it might be different, but I wasn't. Yeah. I mean, you're right though. Contextually, you can't go out there and everybody be trying to villainize it. That's that's the that's the problem I have with it. I just don't like how we judge people because we grew up in America and they grew up in a different. We grew up in a Western society. Oh, yeah. And you have to understand that if it's not an ancestral practice, it might not be in your DNA. Mm. You know what I mean? So you may be going against your own DNA to practice the rules of the land to be considered a good man. Mm. Okay. But yeah. That's practice a- monogamy. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm never just going to have just a, a one thought on it. I, I got all around thought process. So All right. So hold up, though. You got to you gotta choose a side, though, right? We know that. You can't just straddle the fence. That's not straddling the fence. It's speaking both truths. How do, how, how do you speak both truths? If I was born in Africa and Ghana, I promise you I'd probably have multiple wives. No problem. Especially being a man of, of money and position and power. And that would be normal and that would be chill. And nobody in the land would be judging me for it. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't even be a conversation. So that's speaking both truths, just putting yourself in. It's different so. contexts that matters. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. it. The context is different. So the empathy has to be applied. I speak to a global audience. So I'm not just speaking to somebody who has my frame of thought and my reference point. I'm mm. speaking to people like, what? Over here is this and over there is this, but I'm like this. And it's like I'm speaking to all different points of consciousness so that they can see themselves in the conversation as well. That's great. That gives me the pivot because I wanted to ask you this question. Somebody that has such a great platform such as yourself, right? You don't have to have millions of followers, but we, we know that there's a difference between followers and influence. You mm. clearly have influence. I mean, sold out shows, you go to Revolt Summit or you go to Invest Fest, you got a plethora of people crowding to come see you, right? That influence. So you speak to a multitude of people. How do you keep your wording or your message consistent without poisoning other people? Because you got so many people who listen to you. Because like you said, you could be talking to people in, in Africa, but it doesn't apply to people in, in the United States. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm never really had the issue of thinking about poisoning anybody, you know. Anything that's good for you, unless you take in too much of it, like a lot of it, it's always going to be good for you. Mm. Right? Water all around the world is good for people. Right? And for me, truth is water. That's it. But isn't truth different to, depending on the person? Truth is truth. Mm. If I go around the world and I tell you that the sun is hot, I don't care who you are on this planet Earth, you go have to agree with me. You might have a different word for hot. You know what I'm saying? But the meaning still is the same. It's still the truth. Mm. So it's a difference. It's your truth, and then there's the truth. Facts. Right? And then you can kind of get to nuances and context as to where it's like, okay, for this situation, the truth is the truth in this point. But people have to apply empathy when they're listening. No one thing is all. When you say one thing, it's never a generalization over the whole entire universe. Facts. I'm never saying I'm the smartest person in the fucking world. I'm never saying I'm your messiah, I'm your messenger, nothing. What's unique about me is I have great self-awareness. I like to think and I like to teach, right? And I like to come from different perspectives of thought because I think this world needs more philosophy. This world mm-hmm. needs more thought leaders. This, more, this world needs us to think in different ways. 
if there's anything interesting or valuable you get from me, you're seeing a man who uses his mind, mm. right? You don't have to look at it as anything special. That's it. That man uses his mind, and he likes to think, and he's a philosopher and a thought leader of such, and he executes on the other ideas, right, so that he can live in the way that he wants to live, and the world finds value in that because it's rare in this day and time. Facts. Curious, how do you unlock, if, if you can, I feel like I've heard this before, but how do you unlock 100% of your mind? Can you do that? Your brain. I mean, that's subjective between the idea of what is 100%, right? I believe that 100% is about the effort that you give at any given moment, mm. right? The question is, are you giving effort? Because a man, let's say, got 100% of what's considered to so-called be his brain power, but he ain't got no motion. Mm. Does it matter? You know everything in the world, but you sit in that chair and make no moves. What's the value of it? For me, the 100% is in the effort that you put in daily, right? Because a person is only going to get the amount of results based on the amount of energy that they put in, mm. right? So think about living in your edge. What is your edge? Like pushing yourself into the boundaries of the uncomfortable daily, mm. right? And living in that space to continue to expand, continue to grow, continue to challenge yourself, and have a growth mindset that allows you to live beyond even your own so-called limited thinking. To me, that's the 100%ness. Knowing that you have no limits, being in the I am, I can be and do anything that I want to do in this universe, right? Now, let me go figure it out. I'm in my 100%, mm. right? I, I got to do things to make sure that I'm in a connection to that 100%ness and I'm not blocking it, eating right, being around the right people, Right, what is going to bring out the fullness? And what am I doing that's not good? What am I doing that's good? What am I doing that's what could I be doing that's better? Right? For me, the hundred percent is just living in your edge and giving maximum effort to your potential. Mm, that's hard. Y'all wanted to ask you wrapping up, right? I wanted to ask you this. Uh, I asked, I used to ask this a lot. I'm just curious. If you had it your way, right? Hundred percent your way, not how it is today. We could have a magic wand and say I want it like this. And you had to choose. Explain why. What would come first to last out of love, loyalty, respect? What you got to have first, what's second and what's last? Um, it's a good question, but I say, you know, most time people are loyal to you is because they respect you or they love you, right? So if you have loyalty... You almost don't need the respect or the love, right? Because that person is not going to backstab you. That person is not going to go against you, right? But there's people who have been disloyal to people that they respect, and they've been disloyal to people that they love. So I have to say loyalty as number one. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Loyalty has to be number one. And, you know, uh, the respect, you know, and the love can go in either which way, however you want to put it. But as long as loyal, shit, we good to go. That's you ain't got to like me. That's crazy that you say that, bro. I swear that I can't make this up. You guys, my team, I, that's my number one. I say that because, like, what is respect, though? It's subjective. And if I don't have it, what does that mean? I don't care. <laughs> like, I exit myself out. But if I can have a magic one and say, and if I can say everybody is loyal to me, that comes with a, it comes with things. Respect, you can respect me and still do me dirty. You can respect me and still get me killed, set me yeah. up around me. You can love me and we see, we see people... Who, who love people and and they treat them the worst. Like, that's when, like, so loyalty, I, it ha, I... Yeah, because I would have to define the love as respect. Uh, or I have to define the loyalty as respect and as love. Mm. If you're loyal to me, that's the form of love that I like. You know what I'm saying? If you're loyal to me, that's the type of respect I want. Facts. You know what I mean? So I believe that loyalty is a combination of respect and love. Mm. Yo, I asked you how I feel starting an interview, right? And we could just finish how we started. Uh, I asked how it felt to be on tour doing all this great stuff. And you was like, man, it feels deserved. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this for 10 years. For the people who don't understand that, right, who haven't seen the 10 years and might have just got introduced to, to you, like explain that to the best of your ability. I'm in my Christ year. I was born 33 years ago. Before you seen me, I was alive, mm. right? And every single day of my life, I thought about me being a God every single day, through the ups, through the downs, right? And I've always worked to live on my edge. I was born in a black Muslim household where they taught me I was a God. And I was bred to build out my potential, 
right, whether it's purposely or not, I always known that I'm supposed to be someone that impacts the world. Didn't know how, didn't even know why, but the feeling was something that never died. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, having these visions about, you know, me doing something magnificent. And from the days that I've been poor, I've been homeless, right? From the days to where it was my darkest days and I had to be in households smelling crack every single morning because, you know, family members of mine were in their lowest and they had us subjective around that and I still got to go to school that day. To the days where I got to go out there and sell drugs and, and to eat to the days where we in St. Louis in the streets doing things that's disloyal to my nature, knowing that I had this consciousness, right? to having bad partnerships, to working with the right people, to doing the good things, to developing my ability to speak, to developing my confidence, to going out there, right, building brands, learning, studying every single day, to having this duality of a man that's from the streets and a man that has consciousness and knowledge, and to seeing people never, not teaching our generation to wanting to be that force of difference, right? To not always having the ability to build with my brothers, so I go out there and seek collaboration with others because that's part of my purpose. That's who I genuinely and authentically am, right? To working in corporate situations, right? To goddamn working and firing them and working for myself, right? For me, my life has always been a preparation for something greater. Right. Everything that I go through is to build me up to do something for God. Mm. Right. And so, you know, the last 10 years or so. Right. Really, my whole entire life. Right. I, I've been working on becoming who I am today mm. and I'm nowhere near who I want to be. Right. So for me, it's like these things should come when you have consistency, because I remember early on, I was like, I'm guaranteed success as long as I don't quit. I'm guaranteed failure if I do. So you can see the maximization of something ever if you quit. Some people started a podcast, they quit third year, third month, third day. You don't know what it would have been if you kept going for 10 years. You took all of those meetings. You said no when you were supposed to and yes when you were supposed to. You put up your money. You did the research. You went through the good, the bad, and the ugly to get to the beautiful, right? So if you see somebody that has something, especially a man that I didn't have no inheritance, mm. right? Nobody handed me a position. Nobody came and was like, okay, we're going to goddamn craft keys and put you everywhere. No, you just got to go out there and figure it out. It was days when I didn't have a damn car and a place to stay, and I got through those dark days, so I deserved the good days, right? I'm handling my family, and we, we, we say family business, and we actually create a family business, right? Mm. My family is goddamn working in the business of where we got new tropics and gold waters and we helping people revitalize their body. We put the crowns on them to change the bandanas, to change the street culture, again to the God culture. You know what I'm saying? When we, we tapping into the cosmos itself, we on platforms moving across this planet Earth. And it takes a whole lot of work. Right, I work with the team daily. Shout out to Messi, shout out to Steve, shout out to my bro Solomon that's with me. You know what I mean? They traveling with me. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time to do this every day. So people that be wanting to destroy it or the people that love it, you know what I'm saying? They both need it, right? But for me, the way I think about it, hell yeah, I deserve this and much more because I believe you deserve what you work for and I've been putting that work in. Yo, it's crazy you say that, man. I, I usually say this to people that's from my city because I've seen it. And, like, I know we just meeting and stuff like that, but um, just looking at your platform and just looking at you, she says, man, I was taught you always can salute, salute another man, right, and salute another king. That takes nothing away from you. But, bro, don't it feel good, bro? Like, you, like you're doing so much great things, bro, so many great things. And, like, just where we come from, I, I said this, I got to stop saying it, knock on wood, but, like, where we come from, bro, if it stopped today, it would just, it still I'm would still just, me. It would be a blessing if it all stopped the I'm day. Still me. It we changed our family lives forever. That the our legacy it would live even if it stopped today. Knock on wood. You get yeah. what I'm saying? In like, my book, as you said, what does it say right there? Mm -mm -mm. There's no ending. It's just another beginning. That's the way I look at life. Mm. You know what I mean? Nothing ever truly ends, right? There's always a hereafter. What comes after that? Right? So, you know, those who die don't get to see what comes next, but those who live do. Mm. Right? So for me, there is no no ending to any story. Right? It's what happens. Right? It's the life. It's the motion that continues. There's no stopping. Something may just be a chapter in the life. Right? If, if you allow that to be the end of the story, right, by you believing in that, then that becomes the heart and reality. 
But for me, no matter what happens, right, my legacy will continue in motion. My life will continue to have impact because I thought about it early on and my idea of success was not getting the results but being on a journey. It was being on the path. It was being in process. So you want to die doing the thing you love, mm. right, or you want to die doing the thing you hate, right? If you, do, if you die doing the thing you love, you're living full, mm. right? If you die doing the thing you hate, you didn't really live at all. So for me, this is my passion, my purpose. You know what I mean? It's my power. So I'm stepping in it daily and I'm developing. Like, this is the immature version of 19 Keys you see. This is the lowest level of 19 Keys you're gonna ever see in reality, right? I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm nowhere near perfect. I promise you I got many flaws, but I promise you I'm working on myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I promise you I'll be going through them shadows to bring them to light to expose myself to me, right? To become better. You know what I'm saying? I, I promise you, I don't like it's it's not no complex of perfection that I have whatsoever. I enjoy the 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 beauty of the enigma, right? To become better. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot that goes into that. But having examples like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you know, as a man, right? I think it gives me the opportunity to see a level of greatness that I want to normalize within myself. Mm. And for me, believing that I'm so far away from reaching those pinnacles that he's reached gives me a journey to continue because it's a milestone, right? So, yeah, we just made some baby steps. We ain't nowhere near, man. Even the stuff that I did, that's that's cool, right? But niggas done rapped about shooting niggas and got this far. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I want to get to a place that, you know, per people are looking at like this is unparalleled. It ain't never been done before. The impact has to be 20, 30, 40, 100 years out. And, and I know men hate when I do this, but I just got to, I just want to stop you there and say, that's that's a fact, right? But just acknowledging everything that has happened and just being able to sit in it for a moment, I'm pretty sure you've done it before. Mm -hmm. It might oh, not be a lot. That's, that's called gratitude. But come on, man. If God, I, whatever God you serve, bro, God is amazing. It just, like, that's, come on, man. That, that to me is called gratitude, man. You know, I think I told uh, Rashad this from EYL at the Invest Fest. I was like, you got to slow down, right? Because part of my conversation was about fast consumption culture. We consume things so fast, and a lot of that is through trauma, right? We're looking for stimulation. We're looking for something to make us feel good. When it's like, no, it's like I be eating fast. Growing up in a household, I always joke about it. I ate fast because I wanted to get seconds. And if you don't finish your plate faster than your siblings, ain't no seconds yeah, for you. Done. So, like, I notice I eat fast, right? But then I be around other people that just caught, they be eating slow. And I'm like, damn, if it's really good, you want to consume it slow so you can appreciate it more and spend a longer time with it, right? But for me, that's a survival mentality. Let me eat fast and then try to get more of this, right? And that's thinking from a place of lack, not a place of abundance, and sometimes the abundance can be the patience with the consumption itself, which makes the moment last longer, right? Increases the gratitude and the joy of it. So the magnitude of this meal or this moment, you know, is much greater than you're trying to fit 20 moments because you don't appreciate that one. So for me, yes, I 100% agree that the world needs to slow down. Mm. The world slow down from a point of appreciation and a point of consumption, right? Like we're living in the greatest technological revolution in the world. But people hear about a great technology, they pick it up for a day, put it down, and wait for a new one to pop up. Mm. Consume that a little slower. Digest that a little better, right? And I promise you, you will get the true value out of it. Mm. And for me, it's the same thing with life. Consume the moment, right? Because then you may be missing details of appreciation or things you can make better, right? Because you're just trying to get to the next moment and the next moment and the next moment. Like, nah, bro, relax. You ain't even seeing the full picture. So I 100% believe in slowing down, right? Because I think that, and this is what KT the Arch Degree said. He said, um, we think about energy as busyness, moving around, having motion all the time. But energy is rest. Mm. Because energy is when you store, right? It's when the energy is being stored, That's right. right? When you're moving around, the energy is dissipating. Mm. It's going out that's always. And that's why you run out of what? Energy. Right. But when you sitting down and you relaxing and you thinking you conserving your energy, you storing your energy. Right. That's when you powerful, you harnessing it, you're refining it. Right. And so we have to learn to get rest. Right. 
when you are living in a trauma-based situation and your nervous system is always fired up because you feel like there's, you know, a, a threat or an attack that's going to happen, you always feel unsafe, you, which means you can never be in peace, never be in calmness, never get you rest. So it means your energy is always going outward, always going outward because your nervous system is always activated. So you're stuck in a survival mode, constantly on alert, looking around. You're not resting like the wise, wealthy man that's sitting back, chilling. But we talk about proximity and have to, having to learn things, right? And just from my perspective, I've learned that the peace is in the gratitude. Because even doing this, bro, I'm not going to lie, like, and this is your interview, but just doing it, like, sometimes you get caught up in, like, man, I want this guest. I'm chasing this guest. I'm chasing this guest. But sometimes you miss the moment that you sit in. And I feel like the peace is in the gratitude because... When you are like you worried, you think thing is coming at you. But when you're grateful, you don't you don't care what's coming at you because you understood you mm -hmm. already stood the test of time. Gratefulness so what, is an attracting energy. Exactly, and whenever it comes at you, you already know I'm prepared. They say success is when preparation meets opportunity. I'm prepared for whatever come and whatever don't come in for me. And I feel like the gratitude, the, the 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 peace and the rest is in the gratitude because you could say you're grateful, you could say that, but do you walk in it? Do you really mean it? In the moment you truly can live in your gratitude, that's when you really can truly rest in your mind. And that's just like, just hearing you speak on it, I feel like a lot of people need to hear that. Because like even just this conversation can open up so many people's minds. Because this right. opened up mine. I'm just like, man, we need to be more grateful. Not speaking on it. Don't just say you're grateful. But practice it. Because then you can really rest. Bro, you know how many ugly people in Atlanta? I mean, it's probably a lot, but ugly is... It's, it's subjective. How many ugly people you see? <laughs> I don't know. I see them all the time. People are ugly as hell. There's a lot of beautiful people here too, though. Yeah, but the beauty comes from the appreciation. Mm -hmm. Right? You can walk into a store, somebody look at an art piece, and they're like, man, that shit whack. It's ugly. Another person walks up to it, and they just stop. And... It allows your brain to see things and allow you to think in different patterns and ways. And you just slow down and you appreciate it. You appreciate the time a person to, you just start finding reasons to appreciate it. Finding reasons to be grateful for this. Finding reasons like, I'm alive and I'm breathing. I'm happy that I can be even have here the time to look at something that I don't understand. Mm. That's a beautiful mind. Beauty is not an outer appearance. It's not. That's why we say it's subjective because it's based upon, you know, your ideas and your framework of how you see and appreciate things. But if you don't appreciate life, you can't be beautiful, mm. right? If, if if you see somebody's face, a lot of times you don't appreciate it, so they're ugly to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It may be some beauty in there, but you can't see it. You I know what I'm saying? Life is beautiful, but a lot of people don't appreciate it. So for them, life is ugly, and so are they. I wish people can see that, and I was going to say within themselves, though, because a lot of times, even your same example, right? Let's say somebody go into a, the store, they, they don't like it, right? But somebody else come into that store, I offer I offer you a million dollars for this painting, right? Let's say you sell it for a million dollars, it goes on Instagram, this painting was sold for a million dollars. Now, all of a sudden, everybody like, oh, that's hard. The whole time, you overlooked it so many times, right? But because the the, the number value, the, the dollar sign, it was sold for a million dollars, now it was beautiful to you. Same with people. I feel like a lot of people are overlooking the beauty in themselves because they're so busy looking at everybody else. And I feel like, I don't know if I could do anything with my platform. I just want people to understand that, yo, and this is not no knock to you, but the same people that I talk to, the same people that you idolize, the same people that you love, is a piece of you in there too. And you can do it. They no different than you. And this is with all due respect for you and me. But it's no different for nobody out there if you just apply the time and the effort to do what you love to do. But I feel like a lot of people just overlook the beauty they got in themselves because they too, too busy looking at everybody else. Man, I feel like sometimes I'll be like that, and then sometimes I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tough love type of person. Like, nah, it's a big difference because I'm going to actually put that work in and you not. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. you you Because how you appreciate somebody, you know what I'm saying, for what they actually do. Because a lot of people don't appreciate because they like, we the same. We not the same. I'm a whole different animal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to go out there and step in that ranks where, you know, it may be scary. Right, it may be danger. I'm gonna do it. I don't feel like doing. It. I'm still gonna do it. Right? If you got that audacity to stand up, you don't need to be babied. You need to get your ass up and go put some goddamn work in. That's the difference. That's a fact. Then don't put in no motion. You ain't nowhere near like me. That's you know what I'm fact. saying? Yeah. It's, you gotta be a soldier. You gotta be trained. You gotta be tested. You gotta have experiences to be qualified. 
You know what I mean? I understand the positivity and the motivation to get people in motion. That's what motivation does, right? It puts you in motion. But a lot of people, man, they need a they need a wake up call. A reality check. Right? And you can't appreciate when a person actually put in work. You know what I'm saying? Because we not the same. Even sometimes that celebrity that you hate on, but they done put in so much goddamn work, that's why they nowhere near around you. You know what I'm saying? That person that's in a place that you hating on, they ain't got time to hate on you because they putting in work. That's what makes them different. Mm. The biggest difference between failures and success is the work. I ain't got nothing to say about but it. But I love y'all too. I, hey, I ain't got nothing right. to say. They'd be all right. Because no, somebody facts. like, you know what, he right? I'm going to put that work in. No, facts. Hey, you you hey, hey. Yeah, I ain't got to say it. Then we the same. You feel me? You put that work in. Yeah, now we on them equal levels. Nah, you don't put facts. no work in, man, you stay down there well, with the devil. Well, to devils. the people that can hear it, because everybody can't hear it, but that's what I'm speaking to the people that can hear it, that understand what I'm saying. Because, nah, you right. You right. No, no, I'm glad you, you said right, what though. you said. I just had to come with the... <laughs> nah, you right. Smack them on their little heads sometimes. Because you think I told... Because people see... don't want to be... Like, well, look at what you do. You got a cast up. You got f four cameras around here. You know what I'm saying? You got three people in here. You got people on the switchboard. You got cameras over here. That's money. Right? Like the time it takes to get that money, the energy, the ups and downs, the the cooperation, collaboration, connection, the networking. Why if they want what you got, they don't want to put the work in that you put in. That's the difference. Listen, you actually actualizing something. When Stop I say, wanting things you ain't willing to work for. Fact, no, you're right, bro. Listen, I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah, don't get me started. No, let, even before, let me be the, you know, you do <laughs> the good. I'm going to hit them with the, I'm you about feel to say, me? It's a I double had, team a lot, over a lot here, of, man. A lot of came out this, bro. I had to move out the city. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a lot of niggas ain't going to take appreciate that Appreciate that. You got to appreciate that work that make him different. No, nah, facts. Nah, you want to be different? Put that work in, man. Ain't nobody got to listen. Ain't, listen, I appreciate what you said. That was solid. <laughs> you feel me? But I know way too many people that fantasize about their potential instead of put their work in. Mm. And they think the fantasy about their potential or who they could be is good enough. Living in reality, not just in your mind. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Hey, this is fire, brother. Man, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. For yes, real. sir. Thank like, you. I shit. had new music on the way as well, man. I say new music like I ever put out music, but we got music on the way. We got the soundtrack to the movement, so make sure y'all lock into that as well. Heavy too. What type of music you playing, bro? Oh man, we got bops for the people. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother Rance, fifteen hundred man. You know Rance, he put together Nipsey album. You know what I'm saying? Roddy Rich. You know he he his band. Um, they the ones who always do Jay Z, Beyonce uh, sound. So you go get the best sound in the world once we get to lock in and put together this project for the people. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it just like you speaking, or is it actually music? No, it's real music. Come on, bro. You know we we're outside. You know we don't want to hear music from you, bro. Yeah, that's what you go hear there. <laughs> it's not about what you want. I think that's the, the crazy part, people. It could do some R&B. No, 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 no. Listen, man, the guys go hear this work because when I be out there moving, who making the music to the soundtrack? Shout out to Nas and Hit Boy. I love what they doing. But rappers ain't rapping about nothing, right? So we're going to get something to the culture. We got to push a hard line, man. We got to step outside in the name of Drip. We're going to really show you how to move with it because what you don't know, right, I'm fantastical with these words, whether they are instrumental, right, whether they on the beat, whether they acapella, it don't matter, right? I'm cut from a different cloth they don't even make no more. Right? They had this in a little small shop somewhere in, in Egypt and they start they discontinued the fabric. You know what I'm saying? They had a little more left, right, when they were sewing me together. Right? They said, that's the 19 keys cloth. We're gonna make that for him. And then God told me, I said, God, you want me to do a few things, you want me to do everything. He said, Man, do all you can do. You know what I mean? So I say, shoot, it's what I wanna do, it's what God wants me to do. It's what you want me to do, and then it's what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying? I don't operate off man terms, operate off God terms. God gave me something different. So guess what? I gotta use it. Otherwise, you know, I'm oppressing myself. You want some smooth yeah. psychology bullshit. No, it ain't right no there. psychology. <laughs> I, I needed this. I needed this. See, you gotta have those moments. They go play this back. You know how they be having them little TikToks yeah. where they play the music. <laughs> they gonna play it like J. Hill says. Yeah. Whole time was, you want platinum. It's gonna be one of them little white dude voices. They was laughing at 19 keys. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next thing you know, he on Billboard's charting. You know what I'm saying? He out there spitting that ism. You feel me? He continuing that, that marathon. Nah, yeah, facts. just nah, like that. Honestly, at the end of the day, I'm a, I support whatever you're doing, for real. 100%, but we could joke. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be for an Instagram clip or something. No, nah, I mean, that's cool. I, I just want the people to TikTok it up and, and clip that. So, you feel me? We got it before and after. No, nah, facts. My guy. Yo, this is hard, bro. Um, Did we have any uh, missed opportunities? No, I think everything is good, man. Ain't no missed opportunities. We're going to take them all. My dog, man. I appreciate you again. I know I said it a hundred times. No, nah, I, I appreciate y'all having me. Yes, For sir. For real. Fully. Uh, this was great. 19 Keys, J Hill, J Hill Podcast. It don't get no better than this. Now, you niggas got to keep up. Listen, we really putting in that work. It's a wrap. We out. <laughs>